Supercurricular activities show your passion for your subject. They encompass any study of your subject outside of the standard academics of classwork, homework and exams. But what exactly do supercurricular activities include? My name is Sam and this is Oxcentric. Before we get started on which supercurricular activities you can do, a few quick points. Firstly, with supercurriculars I highly recommend doing something that genuinely interests you. Faking an interest because you think a certain activity will look better will only make things less enjoyable for you and make it harder to discuss enthusiastically. Secondly, this is not a complete list. You do not have to do everything I'm talking about here. I personally didn't, and there are plenty of great activities outside of what I'm discussing. Thirdly, if you cannot do certain activities for whatever reason, don't worry. This is particularly true here in 2020 where nearly everything has been cancelled, so that means that students who haven't already got started or students who've had plans disrupted may have to get creative and think up new things to do. Lastly, I'm an engineering student, so expect a slight engineering slant, although what I'm discussing here applies to almost every subject. Without further ado, here's 10 supercurricular activities to set apart your application. Idea 1. Do some wider reading. A common misconception is wider reading only includes books, but this isn't true. Wider reading can include articles, websites, journals, and much more. Personally, I only read a small number of books directly related to engineering, and mostly read online articles about engineering topics that interested me. Reading demonstrates a thirst for knowledge, whether it helps you better understand areas of the subject you're already familiar with, or helps you discover new areas of your subject. Often, universities and courses may have a reading list that may give you some inspiration, so check online for these. I would personally recommend the Very Short Instruction series, not as a book to mention in your personal statement, but as something to give you a background that may spark further reading. On that note, I'd also avoid listing simply what you've read, as tutors want to see you critically analyse books and use reading as a vector for further learning. Idea 2. Be in a society or club. Running or taking part in a society or club can allow you to meet people with similar academic interests to you, allowing you to stretch and challenge each other's perceptions of the subject. If you are struggling with doing so in your school, you can often find groups and forums online which you can get involved in. I personally participated in STEP maths classes, which allowed me to tackle complex maths problems from the Cambridge STEP papers. Having a network of academic peers may also be beneficial for subject-specific support and to encourage you to make your academic work better. Idea 3. Make or do something. Confession, I am a huge theme park nerd. I found my passion for engineering through designing roller coasters, which made me aware of not only what an engineering project would be like, but also how much I enjoyed them. If you have an interest you can make or do something subject specific in, a project of your own can stretch your creativity as well as be really enjoyable. This could be anything from starting a YouTube channel, to making a website, to writing for a blog. If you're an engineer, I particularly recommend trying digital skills like coding or 3D modelling. Whatever you do, ensure you're thinking critically about what skills you're developing. Keeping notes might be useful for later. Idea 4. Take an online course. Online courses or MOOCs are a very good way to enhance your learning. There's a huge variety online, so trying a few to get a taster before fully completing them is a good idea. Doing further research or applying what you've learned in real life situations makes online courses easier to talk about and shows an admissions tutor that you are intellectually curious. A large number of online sites offer courses relating to a vast array of subjects. Open University is one of the largest providers, but there are many others. Idea 5. Go on a summer school. I was very lucky to experience two summer schools which were both extremely valuable to my application. I did Unique at Oxford and Sutton Trust at Durham, both for engineering, but I'm going to discuss these in more depth at a later date. These summer schools were fantastic and really fun with great social opportunities, but they're also basically a free week-long trial of a uni course. Summer schools demonstrate an interest in your subject and give you specific topics to talk about. For example, in my personal statement I wrote about a project I did on wind turbines at Durham and the elements that interested me most. In before someone in the comments like, oh, wind turbines aren't interesting. No, that's a lie. The two summer schools I did were access schemes, and these have little cost for attendees because universities cover all your travel, accommodation, and nearly all food. However, due to their access-based aims, you may not meet all the criteria for getting on the course, aside from academic strength, by no fault of your own. That said, some summer schools aren't access-based. 
The Head Start engineering courses, for example, cost £400 for a five-day residential. These courses have a good reputation and are seen as highly worthwhile. However, beware of providers that charge you thousands for a summer school and always make sure you've done your research. Also, remember that if you can't get on a summer school, it will not jeopardise your application. Idea 6. Undertake work experience. There is a wide range of workplace options that may interest you and may offer work shadowing or work experience. Getting these opportunities requires a thoughtful cover letter or other application form and honestly, a fair bit of luck. I took part in the BAE Systems Engineering Taster Week, a scheme where you and other attendees work in a team on a design project for five days, then present your work at the end. I had not explored aerospace engineering previously, so this was a very useful scheme that helped me develop my own skills and further my technical knowledge. They also gave me, wait for it, a pen. I'm very easily amused. It was also a scheme accredited by industrial cadets. Completing accredited schemes can be beneficial because it signposts immediately the level of experience that you've gained and also means the quality of the scheme is assured. Additionally, I did a week at Alton Towers Resort to indulge my inner theme park nerd and this was also fantastic. Some companies have official schemes with formal application processes, but often you may just have to reach out to the company directly and request to them that you would like to do work experience. The application deadlines for formal schemes are often quite early, so make sure you're proactive and planning ahead soon after starting year 12. Idea 7. Complete an EPQ. EPQs, or Extended Project Qualifications, allow you to choose a subject and research it in depth before completing a report and or a practical project like a website or an app. If you focus your project into something relating to your main subject, it will be much easier to link this into a strong personal statement and have the benefit of giving you more knowledge in your main subject field. Again, I didn't personally do an EPQ, but they're a really good opportunity to research a subject that interests you and get a qualification out of it. Idea 8. Try Olympiads and other challenges. Various subjects have Olympiads or other challenge exams students can sit. These challenge exams are usually by the same people, just not officially Olympiads. I took part in the Maths and Physics Olympiads, the former of which is run by UKMT. These exams usually only come around once a year and you usually have to compete through your school, although not all schools will offer them. The practice papers, however, are available online at any time. If you place highly enough to get an award like gold or silver, well done but also be sure to mention this in your personal statement or teacher reference. Revising for these also gets you used to the kind of unusual questions that you may face in an admissions test if that is something which your courses require. Idea 9. Enter an essay competition. Essay writing encourages you to research and synthesise knowledge on a topic. Essay writing competitions highlight good literacy and report writing skills which are key in basically every university course. If you do win an essay prize, again, well done, and be sure to mention it. However, competing is beneficial regardless. I personally didn't win anything from the essay competitions I competed in, but they were still really useful to talk about in my personal statement. Idea 10. Watch lectures. Universities often do publicly accessible lectures. I went to the nearby University of Manchester to watch lectures on physics and on politics. Lectures are not only at the academic level that tutors will want to see, but they may expose you to new areas of your subject. You can find out online if there are any lectures happening near you, but increasingly universities will upload lectures online so you can watch them wherever you are. As an alternative, watching academic content on YouTube can be equally fascinating. TED Talks and other educational content are often the best places to start. So, that was 10 ideas for supercurricular activities to make your application stand out. I hope this has given you some insight into supercurricular activities, and I think a lot of my viewers will be actually surprised by how many of these they're already doing without even knowing it. As I said in my personal statements video, supercurricular is very important for showing you are an intellectually curious student and especially essential for anyone applying to Oxbridge. Now it's over to you to start learning. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Shut up!